Hello there, this is Nick Ritter, back with another cavalry tutorial video. We're going to be making this from scratch. It's a little nighttime scene, it flips around, turns into a daytime scene, and we're only going to use five keyframes. So, here we are, a blank canvas. I do already have the color palette from when I did this test. You can make your own color palette. Basically, we need a couple of nighttime colors. So primary color, so something brighter, and then a secondary color, something darker for the sky. So I chose this purple and a dark blue. And then for the daytime color, we need a sun, so like a yellow, orange. I chose a sort of mustard color and then a muted blue for the sky. And then I also have a white in here for the clouds. So that's the scene palette. First thing I'll add a background shape. I don't like looking at the checkerboard. And we'll change this to black. Beautiful. Now we need to make a square and a circle. So there's our square, there's our circle. The, the square needs to be a little bit bigger. Connect the radius, needs to be a little bit bigger. I'll connect the width to the height. Size that up about like so. And then I'll pull up the corner radius. That's something like that. And then the ellipse shape we can't see anymore. So just, and this is just temporary. I'm going to drag the primary color over to the ellipse and the secondary color, the darker one over to the rectangle. Change the order. And there we have it. So that's our circle and our square. It is like nighttime. So the next thing we need is to build out our clouds and our stars. I'll go ahead and start with the stars. Oh, I'll name this before I forget. Sun, moon, sky. For the stars, I use this super ellipse tool. Hold down alt and click. So we have our super ellipse shape. I'm holding down alt, clicking on the duplicator, changing the duplicator to random. There's a ton of these things. So maybe go down to 12. We can change the shape scale to also be random. So that was a right click down to behavior, random. Uh, right now this, they got way bigger. That's because the default for the random is to go from zero to 10. Uh, not super useful here. So maybe we'll go from like 0.25 to 1.25. And then maybe, maybe I'll make this uh, super ellipse a little bit smaller. Coming into the shape, the radius. Just want these to be little details. So the random attribute, you can control like how spread out these elements are with this width and the height controls. So I just want to find something that looks like it would fit into our little rounded square here. And then we can take our primary color and drag it over to the super ellipse shape fill color. I rename this to stars and I'll select all of this. Control G, click it again and label that stars. So there's our stars and then I'll hide those for now. It's time to make our clouds. So there's probably a few ways to go about this, but I just made an ellipse. I'll set that to be white and we'll call this cloud part. I'll hold down alt, go to the duplicator and then again, change the distribution to random and then shape scale, right click, add behavior, random. These are super huge cloud part, connect the width, to the height and maybe set those to be like, I don't know, 20. And then under the shape scale, we can again turn this to like 0.25 to 1.25. And okay, the sizing on that, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna change the count though to be something more like, I don't know, 16. And then we can change our width and our height, bring those way, way down. So the idea here is that we're using a duplicator to create our cloud shapes. 
and you click and drag through the seed to find something else that you want. So now that we have our clouds, I will call this cloud. Then clicking on cloud again, holding down alt duplicator. Now we can have multiple clouds and they each have a different seed. Change it from grid to random and then move this down to, I don't know, three. And then shape scale, right click behavior, random. Going in, making sure that we have, uh, this one might be a little different, so maybe 0.5 to 1.2. And maybe we can have a few more of these. Go to seven, I like having odd numbers of things. Drag around on our seed and just kind of look for something that looks pretty good. The sun is gonna be covering up the clouds. Hey, that looks pretty cool. Now I'll call this clouds. Grab all of these elements, group them together, clouds. I'm gonna hide that. That'll come into play just a little bit later. So the sky, if you notice in the example, it flips around in 3D. Cavalry isn't natively meant for 3D yet. They're working on the 2D tools first, which I approve of that workflow, by the way, if anyone cares. But here's how you apply it. So in sky, under deformers, you find this 3D matrix. So you click that, open up the 3D matrix, and when you click and drag this rotation, then it'll rotate it in 3D. You can also rotate it in 3D here. You can rotate this in 3D. Gives you some extra options. You can even give it a little bit of depth going in and out. It's a nice band-aid until they really integrate the 3D. So let's go forward a few frames, maybe 12, add a keyframe. I'll go like five and let's rotate this by like negative 15. So that we're creating a, a little bit of anticipation is what that is. And then let's go maybe 20 frames over this way. And I want it to rotate all the way around. So that's 180 plus, let's go like the plus the 15 that we'd had before. So we'll do, what is that, 195. And then somewhere over here, we'll create another keyframe that goes to 180. Open up the graph editor. Let's change all these to be easy eased and mess around with these till we get something that works. And, oh, I forgot one thing. We're going to want to copy this keyframe and paste it right there. You'll see why in a second. Go back over to the graph editor. With that new keyframe selected, just change it back to no easing. So we get rid of the easing on these keyframes because we're gonna use magic easing. Right click, magic easing. If it's not available in your copy of Calvary, that might be because it's uh, still a beta feature. You go over to Window, Preferences, or if you're on Windows, if you're on Mac, I think you go to the Calvary title drop down to find Preferences, and then there's this Show Beta Features checkbox. So I just click that, and then this is available to you. So I right click Magic Easing, Spring Out. Magic easing doesn't work if there's easing, at least in its current form. All right, so we get this nice like snapping into place. But with this last keyframe selected still, I move this quite a bit out and just see how that feels. There we go. So it's got like a little less snap to it, but it's also a little smoother. Okay, so that's our animation. That's our keyframes. Let's see, let's look at this. One, two, three, four, five five keyframes. That is part of the beauty of Calvary. Uh, we're done making keyframes. That's it. So let's go ahead and set up our colors to get that to work. But based on the rotation, we want the colors to change and we also want the background to change. We'll focus on the colors first. The colors changing is through the color blend behavior. And I'll create two of those. This top one we'll call primary, and the second one we'll call 
secondary. Um, so with our primary selected, click on black. We'll treat black as like nighttime, white as daytime, for instance. So here's our bright primary color. Uh, click on the light one, go down, and that'll so that'll change from our moon, which is that light purple, to the sun, which is this like mustard color. So I'll connect that, and then on our secondary one, clicking on the black, we'll go from the night sky. And then you click on the white, and we'll go to our daytime sky, just like that. So instead of sourcing our colors directly from the scene palette, we'll uh, source them from these primary and secondary colors. Uh, with the exception of the clouds, I just want them to be white. So going back into stars, we'll click and drag on primary to go to our super ellipse. And you'll notice that this is grayed out. If I try to click on it, nothing happens. You can cancel these these connections. You click on the pink or the yellow arrows and come up and hit this X. So now it's not receiving any color information. So I'll drag primary over to it, click on fill color, and so now it's receiving the primary color data. So next we'll go to the sun and the moon. We'll cancel the color connection, drag primary over to sun and moon, click on fill color, and we'll do the same thing with our sky, but with secondary. Delete current fill color, drag secondary over to sky, click on fill color. Change to daytime because over here in our color blend behaviors, we have our strength set to 100%. If you pull it down to 0%, then it reverts over to the left side color. So right side color, left side color. We want both of these to change at the same time. One way to do it, create a value node. We'll use this value parameter here. Just connect that over to strength on both of our color blends. Now we have our one value controlling both our primary and our secondary colors. So effectively we're switching from one color palette to the other by clicking and dragging from 0 to 100. Back down to 0 or below, 100 and greater, it goes night to day. Set that to 0. So with the rotation being the only thing that's animated, we want to have that animation drive all of these other behaviors. So I'll open up that behavior, the 3D matrix three, where all of our keyframes are. Now I want this number to drive our value, but currently our rotation goes from zero to 180, but we need our value to go from zero to 100. There's a node just for that purpose. It's called number range. So what number range lets you do is convert one set of numbers to another. I'll, I'll show you how it works. The keyframes will drive all of the other effects. So I will drag this Y rotation up to the value field of the number range parameters. And then uh, the source is going from zero to 180. And then we want it to go from zero to 100 here. Okay, so with this all set up, I will connect from this little blue dot here all the way down to our value. So it's our value to value. So now the rotation is pumped through our number range, converted from 0 to 180 to 0 to 100, and then is piped from there into our value, which controls our colors. <laughs> all that to say, now our colors change as our object rotates. Pretty cool. So next we need to add our skies. This is our stars effect and our clouds effect. So the way this works is that if it's daylight, then we see clouds. But if it's nighttime, then we see stars. In mathematical terms, we could say that if the rotation is a certain number, right, which I believe is below 90, we see stars. If the rotation is uh, above 90, then we see clouds. You can do this with an if else node. So I'll create an if else. It's got three different fields. So the condition one, if you hover over it, it'll also tell you that it's the condition is a Boolean, so true or false, which will output true for any value greater than or equal to 0 0.5 and false for any value less than 0 0.5. Okay, we'll get into the number stuff here in a second. 
but to create the results for true and false, we'll create something called a shader. And specifically, we'll use a shape to shader. And we'll make two of those. This first one we'll call cloud shader, and this one we'll call stars shader. I'll solo these. Up here in our attribute editor, you'll see that they have alpha and they have an input shape. We're not going to worry about the alpha here, but we will worry about the input shape. And this is where we click and drag our clouds and stars in. For the cloud shader, well, this whole group here, we can connect it up to our cloud shader. And then same thing with the stars. We can connect that up to the stars shader. So it's still not visible quite yet, but you'll see everything come together here in just a second. So under if else, we have our cloud shader. That is the case if it's true. And then we have our star shader, which will be the case if this is false. So let's check and see if our condition's working. We can connect our if else over to our sky. All the way down to shaders connect to new index. Look at that. So there's our stars. And then if we check this, there's our clouds. Uh, you will notice the sky is missing, even though we have the visibility of our sky here. That's because shaders kind of take over the whole image. We go into our sky, click on our fill. Here under shaders, you'll see that our if else is piping data into the shaders, but we need to add another one. So we'll add a shader. Just make it a color. This color shader will have our secondary color data since that's our sky data. Click and drag it over, click on color. So now we have our background sky color, which changes since our color palette is changing based on these keyframes already. And then our if else, the background color may still not be showing up, even though we've added it into our fill as its own shader. This is the correct order but I'll show you a quick fix for that. So under blend mode, just select like dist over or source in and it shows back up. I don't know why that is, but it seems to work just fine. So you'll notice that by using a shader, the clouds are masked inside of our sky shape. The same thing with the stars. If we turn our stars on and that's exactly what, what we want. So now that we need to connect the condition to our keyframes, but what we'll do is we'll open up our number range, our if else, and we'll create a new node, this time a math node. And what this will do is it'll divide by 100. So we'll drag our number range in as the first number. We'll divide by 100, and that gives us our result between 0 and 1. And then we can connect our math 3 into our condition. Uh, you'll see the sky, the sky just populated with clouds. And when we go back to nighttime, we have stars. So that's it. Whew. That's the whole effect. We have five keyframes driving a color palette shift between our foreground, our background colors, between our primary and our secondary colors. We have those keyframes driving whether or not we see stars or clouds based on if we're halfway through the turn or less. If you wanted an extra challenge, how would you loop this? Because currently, if you take this 180 degree number here, and you keep flipping it, it just stays daylight. So how would you make this loopable? I mean, from night to day, flips again. I'd love to see solutions to that. I'd love to see who can crack this. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, please ask me down in the comments. If something was confusing, please let me know. I'm trying to make these videos better as I go along. And then if you have any requests, I'm happy to take those. The last video I did about my logo animation was based on a request. And subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this in the future. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.